Welcome inside our broadcast communication studios. Ryan Rose with you. We are talking Charlotte 49ers track and field. These are the folks that pretty much work from the day school starts all the way past graduation. It's one of the few groups that competes year round and even into the summer. You know, that's the goal for a lot of these groups. And of course, we've got Bob Olson here to talk uh, track and field with us. Welcome back, Coach. Thank uh, thanks for coming in. And, and two people that you will never see sitting in a seated position still like this every time you see him in action it's a blur uh, we've got brianna jones who is a junior on the team and isaac mcreynolds a senior on the on the end there and, and speaking of competing deep into the year these are two that got a real taste of going as far you know almost as far as you can go as far as competing and that's something that in the past you know i guess now are your eighth year in the a10 um, you've sent a lot of individuals and groups like the 4x100 on to the next stage and then the next stage after that. That's got to be quite gratifying to be able to look across and go, yeah, these two, they have some postseason experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. And these, these are some powerful scores for us uh, at the conference level and then, you know, the national level potential. The, um, you know, it's, it's unique in the sport in that, you know, we have the conference level competition uh, that's kind of team focused, but then we also have you know, kind of a postseason, which tends to be more individual focused on elite athletes. So as a sport, it's great as a coach and for the athletes to have kind of that dual, uh, that dual element to, the, to their participation. You're, and, and from a coaching and, and teaching standpoint, you've got to coach the team part and, and, you know, we're cheering for each other and pulling for each other. But the work that you guys do all year round on just individual skills, whether it be from just getting off the blocks, whether it be for, you know, the way you execute the final hurdle, just all the things that you have to manage from pole vaulters to the shot putters to the you know all the different athletes and all their different skill sets how do you how do you manage all that with a group as large as you have you just use every hour every <laughs> hour of the day um, I mean I, I explain to people sometimes just how uh, you know the, the grand scope of, of our just our daily plan we have people practicing many times as early as six or seven in the morning and then we're coming off the field maybe at six o'clock uh, in the evening and there's probably somebody from some group at some time practicing that entire period. Wow! And if you drive by the track at any point, there's random people out there working. They're not just not just community people hanging out at the track. They're actually our student athletes, getting it done. Let's talk about getting it done a little bit, Brianna. You guys, the four by one team, made it all the way to the NCAA finals. That's a lot of meets. If you think back to just your last year here, your sophomore year, all the different competitions, all the different practices leading up to that moment, you got a taste of it. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what motivates you to get back there and, and get, a, get a little bit bigger bite of that coming up uh, here this late this year? What motivates me is that I know the potential that our team has and we just grow every year. And I know that we a lot of us came so close to getting that far last year. And mm -hmm. I know that as well as myself and others, we're working towards not only getting there, but getting more events in like the four by one, but I also, you know, want to go in the individual events and I want to put Charlotte on the map as a scoring team at NCAA. Well, you're able to do that in the high jump and the long jump, which you won the A-10 championships uh, in 2011. Yes. Um, so that gets points for the team, but individually that helps you as far as, you know, you want to post a, a good distance. Mm -hmm. and, and earlier this year, 40 uh, at the Virginia Tech invite your mm -hmm. your um your is it the long, triple jump 40 feet yes the triple jump looks to me like because i'm i was i played basketball and i'm right-handed so i always jump off my left leg well mm -hmm. you can't be dominant in the triple jump you have to jump off of each <laughs> leg as you do and it looks kind of awkward but 40 feet yeah it's um it's definitely hard because <laughs> um you do have a dominant leg and the other one you have to work to be at least equal to that other leg to right. get you that distance but um it's really just you know a lot of training and focus on what you're weak at if your other leg isn't as strong then mm -hmm. obviously that's you know that's what i've been working on a lot and 40 feet was really an accomplishment for me because this time last year i wasn't jumping that far so i know that i am focusing on those little things that make that difference an inch and a half off of a qualifying list so what what is an inch and a half i mean I know it's about that, but what is, how do you build up to another quarter inch, another quarter inch? What is that process like? I know it's an ongoing thing. That inch and a half that you need is the difference between lifting your leg maybe 90 degrees versus 85 degrees. It's wow. that, it's that smallest um, increment and 
you may not even notice it. Sometimes when you get out the pit, like you won't notice until they actually mark it and it uh, surprise you. But it's it's the smallest thing. But we train every day to try to make ourselves stronger so those things can become a little bit easier. To get that extra inch, that's got it from a technical standpoint. You know, that, like she said, it's the smallest little thing and. You guys as coaches, you know, you're working constantly to get them to that, let them peak the absolute best they can do every, you know, we want to be consistent, obviously, but what is that process like as you go through? And it doesn't start in April. It doesn't start in March. It starts way back before they even get here in the fall. Yeah, I mean, it's a year-long and even sometimes a career-long right. endeavor uh, to try to, to bring up the physical capabilities of the athletes, but then also develop the technical execution that gets them there. And it's kind of that duality. And some people advance along the physical lines um, at different different rates, and some people develop their technique at different rates. And so she's right, you know, sometimes uh, a couple inches of knee lift or uh, a little bit more extension here or there, you know, can make a huge difference in the end result. Uh, and a guy who also deals with the technical side of it, Isaac, um, won the 60-meter hurdles last year at the indoor champs. But also, to my count, and I was trying to dig back through your bio, set the school record, I think, and beat it twice. Is that right? Yeah. Set the school mm -hmm. record in the 110 hurdles and then beat it and then beat it again, especially in crunch time in the regionals. You beat your own school record at the regionals. So don't talk about peaking at the right time, but it's still, yeah, you're trying to shave, shave hundreds of seconds off of that time. What is that process like for you? Uh, the process for me is um, it's it's a working process um, depending on what the coach has me doing. Um, he usually has me peaking at the right time, like you said at regionals is when I usually peak. But um, shaving off that little tenth hundredth of a second is something as simple as getting my lead leg down a little bit faster, um, driving my leg up a little bit higher out of the blocks, uh, leaning at the line at the end. So we're, we're getting it together. Now the last time you actually had the Charlotte jersey on was last year at the regionals. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. It's been because your your indoor eligibility is up. Everything now for you is kind of funneling towards that outdoor season. Right. What have you put your body through this year to get the maximum out of yourself when it comes time? Um, well, more more than anything, this year is more mental. Um, it's very hard to train for a long amount of time and not compete at mm -hmm. least with the team. Mm -hmm. um, I'm get, I'm starting to get used to competing on my own, but uh, physically, um, getting a lot stronger in the weight room, um, focusing a lot more on keeping my health up because I've been plagued with injuries throughout my career. But this year, I think I've been doing a lot better job of, of keeping my health good and um, in good shape. Now, Brianna is going to be competing in the uh, conference indoor championships at the middle of February. But then you have that overlap crossover part where you, some people start going to outdoor meets right along that same time. Isaac, probably one of those people. Get a little chaotic here as the changeover happens from A-10s and some people are moving towards, you know, because the distances get a little longer outdoors and, and things like that. It does a little bit, uh, especially when, you know, from a coaching standpoint, you're planning that periodization and who's doing what. And so there are a few weeks there where you got people going a lot of different ways. But this, the academic calendar helps us a little bit because okay. as we exit the, uh, the indoor conference championship, we're getting close to the spring break period. So... Usually some of the folks that are finished with their indoor do a little bit of work and then we have spring break and we use that as a natural kind of divider to unload people just a little bit from some of maybe the nagging injuries and things they had from the indoor season and get ready to ramp up things for the outdoors. And the post-conference people indoors, um, we can kind of focus in on them a little bit uh, and try to maximize their performances to try to make that cut into the national championship. And then speaking of schedule change over, three more meets you can catch out at the, out at the uh, track this season, the Irwin Belk track and field. Uh, 49er Classic in mid-March, uh, the Charlotte Invitational about third weekend of April, and then the A-10 Championships the first weekend of May. Uh, we, we appreciate you guys stopping in for a few minutes. Uh, Coach Bob Olson, Brianna Jones, Isaac McReynolds, good luck to both of you this season. Isaac, we're going to send you out with an A-10 Championship. I know uh, that's the goal for him and the team. We got you for one more year, but that doesn't mean we don't want to see some, uh, some big things coming. I know they've got the rings on from the A-10 titles. Uh, a year ago, so we're hoping that uh, we can get some more jewelry for these uh, for these athletes. Good luck to all all three of you. We will see you out to track and field. You have no excuse not to come out. You've got three chances to watch these uh, individuals compete and the teams compete. We hope we'll see you out there. Go Niners!